The first thing you want to do when you're solving an equation is make sure you change all subtraction to addition if you have any subtraction. And the way you do that is you change subtraction to addition and change whatever's after it to the opposite sign. Now I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3n plus 50 equals 20. All I did was change the order of negative 3n and 50 around. And I can do that because I'm just adding them together. But I needed to change the sign before I could do that to make sure I was really clear that 3n is negative and 50 is positive. Now I have everything so that it's in the order I'm used to seeing everything. So I have my variable first, and then I have my constant being added, and then I have my constant that's all by itself over on the right-hand side of the equation. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to deal with the addition. So we always get rid of addition first before we get rid of multiplication or division. So now I'm going to get rid of that addition by adding the opposite. So since I'm adding a positive 50 to my variable, I'm going to add a negative 50 to get rid of that positive 50. And if I do it to the left side, I have to do the same thing to the right side. So since I'm adding negative 50 to the left side, I add negative 50 to the right side. And I like to show this vertically, which you don't have to, but I like to show it vertically because when you work with equations, you simplify by bringing everything down. So let's think about that. We're bringing that negative 3 in down. We're bringing the sum of 50 and negative 50 down. Um, we're bringing our addition symbol down, we're bringing our equal symbol down, and we're bringing the sum of 20 plus negative 50 down. All of that comes straight down. So negative 3n comes straight down. My addition symbol comes straight down. 50 plus negative 50 is 0, so that's the sum, which I bring straight down. My equals mark comes straight down. 20 plus negative 50 equals negative 30, so I bring that straight down. Now, if I have anything I can add together, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I couldn't add negative 3n plus 50. Those cannot be added together. But I can add negative 3n plus 0, because anything plus 0 equals 0. So I'm going to simplify the left side. That's called simplifying when you add together or multiply together anything that you can. So negative 3n plus 0 equals negative 3n. Again, we're bringing everything straight down, so we're bringing that sum of negative 3n plus 0 straight down. We're bringing our equals mark straight down, and we're bringing our negative 30 straight down. And we never have more than one equals mark in each line. That's really important. Now, since I have negative 3 times n, I'm going to use my inverse operation, which is division to get rid of my negative 3 that's being multiplied. Or I can multiply by the reciprocal. You can do it either way, whichever way makes more sense to you. So, again, I'm going to simplify everything and bring it straight down. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. And we have our n. Bring your equals straight down. Negative 30 divided by negative 3 is positive 10. Again, we're going to simplify that left-hand side. We can multiply 1 times n, and then we're going to bring everything straight down. So 1 times n is n, and your equal straight down, and your 10 straight down. So n equals 10. And I want you to remember that you need to be using check steps, especially on quizzes and tests. So I'm going to check this real quick and make sure it's correct. So I'm going to substitute 10 in the place of n in my original equation. So 50 minus 3 times 10 should equal 20 if I have the correct answer. So. I need to multiply before I subtract, so that's going to be 50 minus 30 equals 20. And that's true, so I do have the correct answer. 
In this equation, as usual, if we have any subtraction, we want to go ahead and change it to addition. So I'm going to change the minus n into plus or add the opposite of n, which is a negative n. Now I'm going to switch my equation around so that it's a little easier to look at. I have 8 and negative n being added together. So I'm going to switch that around to negative n plus 8. It means the exact same thing. It just helps my brain to see that n is the first thing that's being added. Now, I want to get rid of my addition. So 8 is what is being added to my variable. So I'm asking myself, what is being added to my variable? Positive 8 is being added to my variable. So I want to get rid of the positive 8 by adding the opposite. So I'm going to add the opposite of positive 8, which is negative 8. Since I add negative 8 to the left side of my equation, I need to add negative 8 to the right side of my equation as well to keep the equation balanced. Otherwise, that equals mark doesn't mean anything. We would have an inequality mark instead. So I'm going to simplify by bringing everything straight down as usual. So I'm going to bring down that negative n. I'm going to bring down that plus. I'm going to bring down the sum of 8 plus negative 8. I'm going to bring down my equals mark. And I'm going to bring down the sum of 14, a negative 14 and negative 8. When I do that, I end up with negative n plus 8 plus negative 8 in here. That's the whole reason we added negative 8. Negative 14 plus negative 8 is negative 22. Now, I can simplify the left-hand side because anything plus 0 is 0. So, n, negative n plus 0 is negative n. And I'm bringing everything else straight down. I'm bringing the equals mark straight down and the negative 22 straight down, as well as that sum of negative n plus 0. Now, I have negative n equals negative 22. I am not done. Even though the n is by itself, it's really not, because we have a negative in front of it. So this really means the same thing as negative 1 times n. Negative n really means negative 1 times n. And if it helps you, you can write that negative 1 there to help you visualize. So now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal or divide. You can do it either way. So you can either multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1. It doesn't matter. Whatever makes the most sense to you. So we can either divide both sides by negative 1, because that negative 1 divided by negative 1 will give us positive 1, and our whole goal is to get a positive 1. Or you can multiply both sides by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 also gives us a positive 1. Our entire goal is to get positive 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 gives us positive 1 times n equals 22. So n is 22. In this equation, we have a fraction being multiplied by the variable. So I wanted to show an example of this kind of equation. Again, change subtraction to addition if you have any. In this case, we don't have any, so we don't have to worry about it. Now I'm going to deal with getting rid of addition right away. That's always my first step. So. The way I get rid of addition is I add the opposite of whatever number is being added to my variable. Positive 5 is being added to my variable n. Therefore, I'm going to add a negative 5 to get rid of that positive 5, because positive 5 plus negative 5 is 0. If I do it to the left-hand side, I'm also going to do it to the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced. So, when I do this, I end up with 1 fourth n plus 5 plus negative 5 is 0. Bring my equals straight down, and 25 plus negative 5 is 20. So I end up with 1 fourth n plus 0 equals 20. 1 fourth n plus 0 is just 1 fourth n. And that's our whole goal with getting rid of addition, is to always end up with plus 0. We always want to end up with our variable being added to 0. That's how you get the variable by itself.
or start to get it by itself. Then we have to deal with multiplication. So 1 fourth n equals 20. Now we have to deal with the multiplication. So here, since we're dealing with a fraction, and whenever you're dealing with fractions, the fraction will be multiplied times your variable. The way we want to get rid of our fraction is, is to multiply by the reciprocal. And the reason we do this is with multiplication, we want to end up with 1 times our variable. And the way you end up with 1 when you're multiplying is you multiply by reciprocals. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. And when I do that, 4 over 1 times 1 over 4 is 1, which is our whole goal is to end up with 1 times n. And then 20 times 4 is 80. 1 times n is n, so n equals 80. When I check this equation, the way I'm going to check it is by substituting 80 in the place of n. So I get 1 fourth times 80 plus 5 equals 25. Now I need to multiply before I add here. So 1 fourth times 80, 4 goes into 80 20 times. So I end up with 20 plus 5 equals 25, which is a true statement. Therefore, I have the correct answer. In this equation, our variable is being divided by 3. And we can deal with this a couple of different ways. First, we always look at our equation and see if we have any subtraction. We do not have any subtraction. We do have negatives, but not subtraction. So we don't have to worry about changing subtraction to addition. Now, the way I showed you guys to deal with this kind of equation where you have division is to rewrite it as a fraction that's being multiplied by your variable. So I would have you rewrite this as negative one-third times a plus six equals negative eight. And if you look back at your notes, we went through quite a few examples on how to take a division uh, a variable being divided by a number and changing it into a fraction that's being multiplied by a variable. So that would be your first step. Next, I'm going to start by getting rid of the plus 6. We always want to get rid of that addition right away. So I'm going to add the opposite of a positive 6. I'm going to add a negative 6 to get rid of that positive 6. If I do it to the left, I have to do it to the right. I have to add negative 6 to both sides to keep my equation balanced. So I end up with negative 1 third times a plus 0 equals negative 14. Next, I need to simplify the left-hand side. Negative 1 third a plus 0 equals negative 1 third a. And we bring everything else straight down. Now we want to get rid of the negative one-third being multiplied by a. And we always can get rid of multiplication by look, looking to end up with a positive one. So we're going to multiply by reciprocals. So negative three over one times negative one over three will give us a positive one. And if we multiply the left by negative three, we also must multiply the right by negative three. Negative 3 over 1 times negative 1 over 3 equals positive 1, which was our goal to end up with 1 times a. So that's how we get a by itself. And negative 14 times 3 is positive 42. So 1 times a is a. a equals 42. In this equation, we don't have any subtraction, so we don't need to worry about changing subtraction to addition. We're going to jump right in and get rid of whatever